Well, hi, everybody. I just want to show you uh, some of the latest things that we're doing here at Ace of Coins. So I made a list, as you can see, how my um, with my uh, very elaborate, sophisticated graphics. And so here's just basically some of the things we're talking about. Now, um, on Thursday evenings, we have uh, conference calls with Q&A at the end. Uh, sometimes we just start out with Q&A. We cover these subjects. Um, these these include documents and things of that nature. So if we are discussing something, chances are um, I have a document for it or whatever, and I'll share it. So you're welcome to join on Thursday evenings. The way to do that is to just go to aceofcoins.com and uh, there's a calendar in there. You can just click on the calendar link and just schedule the time. Um, also, of course, you can schedule time one-on-one -on -one with me if you want during the week, Monday through Thursday typically is a good time when, when people do that. But anyways, um, most of what people wanna talk about is tax-free crypto investing. And I know cryptos are low right now, but you know how that goes. It's all cycles. But if you set up your structure properly, you don't need to use an IRA or anything that's exempt. Um, you don't need to use a nonprofit organization to avoid taxes. And also, you can when you set up a, a structure to invest in anything, namely cryptos here, but I mean anything, you can actually avoid taxes and other liabilities legally if you just simply uh, set up your property rights in a certain way and change your accounting practices. A lot of people don't even know that they can actually change their accounting practices. Uh, so anyways, so we talk about tax-free crypto investing, as I like to call it, uh, without using an exempt structure, no IRAs or any similar type uh, accounts. You get access to your money all the time and it's all tax-free or let's call it deferred, okay, to be a little more accurate. But anyways, the, the, the idea is that you want to have access to your money, okay? And that's what we're doing. Also, judgment proofing, that's been around. I've been doing that for 30 years. Uh, you know, um, really, it's a perfect track record. I mean, there, there's not a situation where I wasn't able to come in there and, and fix a situation or prevent a situation. Now, some of the times, you know, if it's secure debt or something, sometimes we have to... Uh, there's some things we, we can't recover, right? But in any case, going forward, uh, my methods are so so far haven't been challenged. Um, and it's nothing, you know, so unique that you couldn't do. Um, but I'm just showing everyone and I, I set up the structure and I show you how you can use this yourself. And then part of the, I think part of the benefit of, of understanding how I'm judgment proofing things is my first risk that I want to help people avoid is the cost of litigation. So I'm not showing you how to be smart and use the court system, let's say smart in the term sense of, you know, how to use the court system and, you know, case law and none of that matters. What I'm showing people how to do is avoid the need to go to court and defend something. Okay. Uh, in any case, that's the idea of what I like to call judgment proofing. Also, we can disappear. I mean, um, I can show you some counter, counter surveillance techniques. I don't really advertise this, but uh, for some clients, uh, I have a wide variety of clients, uh, they need to disappear and we can do that. Now, there's something that I, that I just recently introduced. It is along the line of disappearing, kind of like Jason, Jason Bourne style disappearing, okay? Um, but this is uh, more in your face because we're actually using the legal system and some good old fashioned security agreements that are operating as a lien. So what we're doing is we're taking your biometric data, like your fingerprint data, right? Something that you might use to access your phone and your biographical data, like your name and your address. That that type of data is being collected by everybody. I announce all kind of data, like medical information, okay? Any kind of information that's being used to identify yourself. What we're take, What we're doing is, <clears throat> We're creating a security agreement that imposes a lien and a monetary value on the use and collection and storage of your data. This, to my knowledge, isn't really done except for very famous people, okay? I'm showing you guys how to do it. You don't have to be famous. You don't have to be worth tens of millions of dollars. You can certainly do this yourself. Um, I'm, I'm not uh, inventing this. Uh, it's not a theory. And so what happens is with this technique I'm showing people is you're going to be able to put a lien on your biometric data and it'll show up as a liability on all the company's balance sheets who are collecting your data. So there's Google, Amazon, your DMV, okay, the credit reporting bureaus, government agencies, okay, you name it. So this shows up as a liability once we perfect the security agreement, okay, and the security agreement is established by the use of your data. So um, once that's there, it adversely affects, or it could, it adversely affects the organization's balance sheet, its ability to get insurance, it, uh, renew its insurance, and also it does, it's going to affect investors' interest. 
So this is going to give us a lot of power. And so that's why I wanted to share this. And so we've been we've been talking about that every week on Thursday. And I do those one on one. I will write your security agreement and uh, show you how to record it and how it works and that sort of thing. And no, you don't have to sue people. You can just sit back and watch what happens. But you can also you can foreclose upon your rights in the security agreement. So I just I'm really excited about that part of it. We could talk all day about that one. Now, there's something else that I just recently brought up, which is a way to prevent problems or let's say the state or the court interfering in your marriage. Um, it doesn't matter if you have a marriage license or not. OK, it doesn't matter even if you're in the middle of a divorce proceeding, you can still use this. Um, obviously, it's better earlier on, but you can divorce the state, as I want to call it here, uh, with a post nuptial agreement. Now, this type of agreement that I talk about that I began talking about a couple of weeks ago can be a prenuptial agreement. But I, I imagine most of the people that are going to hear about this, um, they're already in a marriage situation. So the postnuptial agreement, it does a couple of things. It divests the court and the police and the state of getting involved in your marriage and allows you to protect your children. Because I think a lot of times the state gets involved and tries to take your children. So um, this agreement precludes that from happening. Now, there are some exceptions, but for the most part, I'm talking about 99% of the time, it's going to solve and prevent many problems that I've seen over the years, okay, without having to go in there and fight with the judge and file stupid documents in the court. If you set this up properly, um, even if you're in the middle of a proceeding, you could you could use these uh, strategies, but again, it, it, you'll get better results if it's before. Um, so this postnuptial agreement is going to show how the family and its immediate property. Now I'm not talking about real estate. I'm not talking about assets. I'm talking about chattels, like things like your household goods. Okay. Things of that nature, things that would be part of a, a divorce proceeding. Okay. That would bring the court in to try to divvy up who gets what, right? What we did, what we did is we created a trust agreement. Okay. There's a declaration of trust inside the postnuptial agreement. Now there can be more than one. I'm just, I, I gave an example because most of what I do right now is tutorial. And then I've used components of this over the years to help people. So instead, I just put this all together in one, one document. So now in the postnuptial agreement, we use the formation or declaration of a trust that probably already exists. We just make it formal in this agreement. Okay, that way it's bulletproof. The court can't, can't break through it, okay? We set that up, but we also use something called binding arbitration or compulsory arbitration. And that excludes the court from getting involved in any aspect of a divorce proceeding. And it gives the, the parents or the, the, the husband or wife the ability to resolve their situation without the court interfering, okay? Now, the court could be called into interfering or getting involved in some way or making decisions. It could happen, but you still have ultimately all the control, right? That's what that's what we're doing. You have really, it's a lot of latitude here. But anyways, that's the basic description of what I'm showing people how to use, how to use a post-nuptial agreement, okay, to uh, divorce the state, as I like to call it. Uh, then the other thing that's really hot right now, everybody wants to hear about how am I going to use a homeowners association covenant to actually eliminate property taxes? And you could just do this right in the government's face. I mean, because basically we are the government, so we just have to act accordingly, okay? So this is nothing illegal, nothing crazy, and maybe it looks like a magic trick, but it, it's it's been on the books for decades. No one's used it yet, and I'm showing people how to use it. I successfully did use it once, okay? It just turned out I was able to use this strategy to defeat a mortgage foreclosure, Right now, I think we have a lot better uses for it. It just worked out that way. I don't really care about that situation. What I care about is your property taxes being used for things that are immoral, and then you're still paying them, right? Because the government's going to take your house if you don't pay them. Well, in this case, once you have this set up properly, it doesn't take much. It just takes kind of like a working relationship with your neighbors. In some cases, uh, we can just record a, an HOA covenant if one doesn't already exist. Okay. Um, what we're able to do is decide how our property taxes are going to be allocated. So, for example, if you think your taxes are too high, you could set this up. If you think your taxes are being used for the wrong thing, set this up. Then it gives you and your neighbors the freedom to decide how your tax dollars would be spent because they're no longer tax dollars. They're contributions for things like emergency services, um, uh, road care, road maintenance, right? Things of this nature that we need for our infrastructure that's around our neighborhood. So we can then decide how that works. And there's every legal structure in place to do that. The first thing we need to do, though, is control the property title, 
and the property taxes. And the way I'm showing people how to do it is quite effective at that. So we can certainly talk more about the detail because it's quite a, a big subject, as you can imagine. Now, I did set up uh, recently a, an accounting firm. The accounting firm is called Cryptic Accounting. It's located at crypticaccounting.com. These are accountants that are not going to harass you about crypto coins. They understand that there's no such thing as a crypto tax. They understand that there's no such thing as a crypto tax specialist, right? Uh, and they are not able to be summoned by the IRS to testify against you. Pretty cool. I mean, you tell me what CPA would not be the first guy to woman to testi testify against his client. OK, I've eliminated that possibility. Not that you guys are going to be, you know, expecting that situation, but it's nice to know that whatever you tell these accounts in my firm here, uh, they are not going to be available to testify or be summoned at all by the IRS. What that means is any records that the IRS can can be can obtain would be records you already knew that you're willing to give up. Or in some cases, we can even make it to where the IRS can only get what we call the four corners of the tax return. So in some cases, we actually set that up so they can't get anything, right? So there's a subject there we can talk about. But anyways, I just want to let you guys know we have that set up. Um, so that that just launched actually about six months ago. So we, we just started uh, testing and make sure everything's you know running smoothly with that. And it's looking pretty good. Now, um, also, I like to show people how to create cash flow so they can offset certain types of expenses. Like, for example, you know, the reason why I came up with this is because there are some people that call me up and say, hey, John, I just got $150,000 from an inheritance. And uh, my friend said to call you because maybe you might have an idea of how to allocate that. And so my first suggestion is take a small portion of that $150,000 and use it to create some cash flow. So out of $150,000, take $15,000, and then I show people how to create cash flow with that. Now, I can do with $2,000. I can do with no money. It's easier with a little bit of money, okay, $1,000, something like that. But I'm just saying, what I like to show people how to do is create some cash flow. And for many people, I just show them how to do things like, if it's a young younger person in, in his or her 20s, I like to show them how to create cash flow without getting a job and use that cash flow to offset their uh, student loan payments, right? So that way, the student loan payment is taken care of by something that uh, it doesn't creating, wasting that person's time or taking up that person's time, and he or she can get on with whatever career he really wanted to do, right? So I love to, I love to have those conversations. Those uh, I set those aside. I mean, if you book time with me on my calendar, uh, you'll get uh, you get access to me, and uh, usually those are about an hour uh, conversations. And I do those over a period of time, okay? So uh, typically I can get the results within about 90 days. It needs a good attitude, okay, on your part, but, uh, and some work, but once it gets set up, uh, it's a pretty reliable uh, way to do it and you'll know how to do it. And if you wanna make more money, then you can certainly do that as well, okay? Most of the time though, I show, just, I show people how to offset some pesky uh, living expense they don't want, okay? Um, then also, um, many uh, of my clients become uh, well. They, they call me because they're trying to they're trying to deal with maybe a state situation or maybe there's a huge debt in their small business. Um, maybe it's uh, because of you know the fake disaster they just created in the last several years. So um, I've been actually converting small businesses, mostly schools, gyms. <laughs> there's been some. Uh, professional service organizations, I should say, uh, hair salons, things of that nature, okay? But schools and gyms mostly, I convert them to private membership associations, among among other things. So I get them out of their debt, situa <clears throat> debt situation by reorganizing the way they're managing their cash flow, changing the property rights in a way that makes them uncollectible, okay? It doesn't matter who the creditor is, and it doesn't really, they don't need at that point, once I set that up, they don't need to have a lawyer and defend themselves in court. I mean, it's just all, all those things are eliminated, all right? So then, uh, so as you can imagine, I mean, I can't just have a conversation with someone and then you get all my information, all my understanding, right? It takes time. So I, I take a lot of the content that I discuss with people and I create tutorials and videos with guides and documentation so that you can use them yourself. And so there's a video membership where you can learn all these things I'm talking about um, through, uh, it's privacyfight.io. Okay, is the membership site. So you can join. That's a video membership. It's annual. There's a there's several levels in there, and then of course, you know, you you want to 
to call me. I really, I really like when people call me uh, first so I can really evaluate their situation and, and recommend something. Um, lots of times, you know, people schedule time with me and they think there's this horrible problem. And all I tell them is one, two, three, here, do this thing. And that's it. That's all they need. You know, so you'd be surprised. So it's worth it to uh, schedule time and talk with me, to, uh, have me evaluate your situation or, you know, just to see what's going on there. So also please join the Thursday weekly calls. Um, I announce those and I put up material. I publish material through my Telegram channel called Ace of Coins. But then Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern time, I'm in Florida, so it's 7 p.m. Eastern time. We have a live call. Sometimes I don't, but most of the time I do. Um, and we just talk about these subjects here. Right. And I do Q&A and you're allowed to uh, go off subject if you need to. So I hope to see you on those calls. And if you see here on my my elaborate graphic, you'll see uh, there's my Telegram channel and that's my Telegram ID. You're welcome to contact me that way. It's probably the easier way to contact me. And of course, there is uh, my YouTube channel, Privacy Fight. Hopefully that stays around for a while. But if you want to check out crypticaccounting.com, that's my accounting service. Also, privacyfight.io is the video membership. All right. Thanks so much.